hi, Michael. Um, who are you, first of all? Uh, my name is Michael Christie. Uh, I'm the ruggist, and I, people consider me an expert on handmade rugs. But you are. Um, you are the ruggist, right? So you're. Um, what, what? Why do you like carpets and rugs so much? Uh, totally by chance, I guess. Uh, after university, I started working in a rug showroom, vacuuming, sweeping carpets, and. Uh, the contemporary market really took off in the mid-90s, which makes me sound old, but uh, that's when uh, I kind of fell in love with the style and don't know how to do anything else now. So how many carpets do you have at home? Do you want an actual count? <laughs> oh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, probably about 15 or so in about seven rooms. That's a big house, though. Um, regardless, let's talk about dessert. We're now doing design and dessert. So um, it's early morning in Hanover. Uh, how do you like Hanover? Uh, well, you know, if it wasn't January, I'd probably like it a lot better. But yeah, Northern Europe, as, as it is, a little dark. Uh, but I love coming to Hanover. You know, compared to living in Canada, the, the weather's nice. Uh, climate's good. I don't need a coat. Um, so dessert, uh, we're here at a fair, a fair called Domotex, which is just focusing on flooring, so carpets and wooden floor. And this is a typical fair dessert, I guess. I mean, we're eating some fruit compote and, and is it yogurt? What is it? Yogurt. Oh. I read so, the menu. Uh, so not really desserty, is it? Oh. It depends how you describe dessert. <laughs> I would hope it would be like penna cotta or something. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. not yet. No. Not yet. No. Yeah. But. I don't know if you remember before, we've had panna cotta in Germany before. Did we? Well, technically, I mean, I, I think our Italian friends would not say it was actually panna cotta, uh -huh, uh -huh. but that's what it was described as. When was that? Was that at the sort of like a VIP event thing, like two, three years ago? Yeah, yeah, it was like yeah. that, that uh, press dinner we went right. to. Yeah, yeah. So you and I, we meet at this fair, uh, Domotex, which is one of the largest. Is it the largest one on flooring? Uh, yes, it is the largest f flooring fair, co combined flooring, but between handmade rugs, machine-made rugs, hardwood, composite, and then also um, like all the equipment for, for assembling and installing all of that. So, so you're not from Domotex, but we're talking, we're referring to, to Domotex a lot, so, but you're not part of that no. team. So you're, um, you're a critic. Do you call yourself a, a design critic or a carpet critic? Uh, I, I do call myself a critic uh, and, and kind of a commentator. Uh, people who read my work know I'm relatively opinionated and um, just in last December I had sent a compliment to a, a colleague from a competing publication, Cover Magazine, yeah. and uh, they'd written a very nice article and I sent a note saying it was a very nice article and they said, that means a lot coming from a stern and discerning critic and I thought, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I posted something on Instagram yesterday and you commented, that was one of the first things you commented this morning when I met you, like, why did you post that fake carpet uh, on your Instagram? I mean, do people know enough about carpets? If you mean people as, yeah, as a broad generalization, absolutely not. Yeah. But it's, you know, my colleagues in handmade, we, and of course my love of hand knotted handmade carpets, we all kind of think, you know, this is, you know, it's like we're gallerists, right? We're, we, we think these are the best things, you know, that man has ever created. But um, at the same time, they're not available to the, to the mass market because of price point, supply, availability of materials. And so, you know, you can't... You, I'm sorry, what was the beginning of that question? Yeah, let's move to, let's, let's move to dessert instead. Yeah. So are you... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can do more coffee. Um, are you a dessert person? We're here to talk about dessert, not only carpet. So, are you a dessert car person? The ruggest. Do you like dessert? Absolutely. Yeah. Cookies. Yeah. Because they're small and portable. Right. Certain cakes. Yeah. Certain pies. Yeah. So. What do you mean certain pies? Oh, coconut cream. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's very, very American. Is. Oh, but of course. Yeah. I mean, you you can take the American out of America, but you never you never get fully rid of it. Yeah, yeah. If I would come to your house, to your seven room house with like tons of carpets, what would you treat me as uh, dessert? Uh, I usually make panna cotta yeah. at home, uh, or um, interestingly enough, you will know that Swedish saffron cake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
because uh, in my travels for rugs, I get to transit through Istanbul quite often. So I always purchase Iranian saffron. And uh, actually, I have a friend uh, who lives at home. She's from Sweden originally, and she introduced me. And one year at Christmas, uh, I saw on her social media, I was like, what is this cake? And, like, and I was, of course, uh, my husband was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm looking up how to make this. And he's like, it's Boxing Day, so nothing's open. And he's like, how are you going to make that? I'm like, well, of course we have three grams of saffron already. Yeah. It will be fine. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> we'll just go to the pantry. And um, spectacular cake. I love it with honey and vanilla ice cream. I've had this idea to try and make it yeah. like in the style of a pineapple upside down cake, nice. but with like this like caramelized honey topping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. But I haven't gotten there yet. Okay, so I have some, I had tons and tons of questions. What's how time is that? We talked to six minutes, and so we have about nine more minutes. I want to talk to you about what we've seen here at the fair, and I want to talk about your job as being on social media. Where do we start? Should we talk about social media first? Sure. So, The Ruggist, you, you're a journalist, you write for uh, one magazine or a handful of magazines? Uh, one magazine now. Yeah. Uh, I used to be more freelance, yeah. but then um, two years ago I took over as editor of uh, Rug Insider magazine out of the US. It's a trade publication for the rug industry. Uh, so now I write only for that magazine, of course. Uh, but then I still do my own work on my blog and, and social media channels, of course. Okay, so first question. Do you identify yourself as an influencer? I do not. Yeah. Me neither. So. Yeah, I mean, certainly I, I think we could both acknowledge that we have influence. But um, I don't like the term. Uh, if, you know, if we're going to be philosophical, it kind of comes down to the idea that, you know, social media allows kind of the democratization of information, but then it also tends to treat all that information as the same yeah. uh, value. Whether it is or not, history will judge this. Yeah. Um, so I just don't like to use the term yeah. personally. Yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd much rather be a stern critic right. than, than right. an influencer. Yeah. Me too. Um, but what are so it's still early on. It's like the first week of January in or 2020. Uh, what what are your social media challenges as professional? I mean, in, professionally, are you going to have TikTok? No. <laughs> are we talking politics now or dessert? No. No. <laughs> um, no. I, uh, I'm this being an exception. I'm not a big fan of of video. I'm not exceptionally comfortable in the format um, I'd like and my extemporaneous speaking is not amazing I'm a much better writer in that regard um, but uh, my challenges for social media uh, how to how to continually innovate and differentiate myself so that my voice comes from a place of authority and, and you know building on years of expertise as opposed to the person who's just looked at, looked at four rugs and said this is amazing but aren't people like, I think, I, I struggle as well uh, with social media. I mean, what position do we have? I think that people are more Googling how to have your living room nice with carpets. I mean, is, would you do that? I mean, do you understand what I mean? I mean what I mean is, look, like, you could tweak your content so it's more like household dish. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. And you see so many times, well, depending on who you follow, of course, on, uh, you know, these like, kind of like... Uh, pictograms showing people how to place rugs in a room and they make very broad assumptions that have really nothing to do with design aesthetics and you know it's just kind of like the room is this big you're going to put your furniture this way and the rug should go this way but it doesn't factor into account things like layering if you wanted to layer carpets uh, the actual traffic flow through the room you know just kind of all kinds of considerations that design professionals you know are accustomed to dealing with and uh so trying to create that content um, is interesting and, and, and very challenging. You know, to that point, you know, if you're going to like format the information on, on my blog, the best read article, the number one Google searched article, is something I wrote. It was a critical commentary of a question I had received, asking where someone could find a knockoff version of a rug. And I responded that you couldn't because, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. D don't be so unoriginal. But so if you, uh, if you Google the term Paul Smith swirl rug, it always, always comes back to this article that I wrote. Mine are always the most critical ones. When I talk about sustainability or like fairs or whatever, like, or, or student work, like this is shit. 
especially when I'm angry. <laughs> People will Google that, yeah. Okay, um, again, time is running up. Uh, we have uh, two more minutes, basically, to talk about uh, the fair. I mean, 2020, trends. I walked around here all day yesterday. Super difficult to find new things at Domotex. Have you, wh what's, wh what did I miss? There's a lot of innovation in texture, and people are trying new materials, trying to innovate, uh, trying to innovate. I think that's the problem, is that we've kind of reached a little bit of a plateau. Um, the technology, particularly in rug creation, has stagnated. Uh, machine made is improving, the quality is improving, and it's looking more and more handmade. But um, at the end of the day, there are only so many ways that you can reconfigure you know, knots on a grid to create a design and um, until we really figure out how to bring a design sensibility to this era that we would define as you know, 2020 or early 21st century as opposed to revisiting Scandinavian right. modern or revisiting right. the Bauhaus. Right. My entire life has never really had a sense of style except maybe bad haircuts from the 90s, right? You know, there's not been a lot of, you know, nothing defining of this era. Right. Not yet. But you said, you, you said materials. Um, I could see that as well, and I'm looking at you as well as, as an expert. So, so what should you be looking for if you're looking for like a 2020 carpet? I mean, of course, there are going to be new materials that are sustainable or recycled in one way or another. But are there other materials, you say? Uh, just. Uh, Various new combinations, recombinations of materials. Um, of course, in rugs, wool is a, a commonly used material. All the natural fibers, really. Uh, but in the machine. But you say they're coming stronger, stronger than before. Oh, uh, they're being used in new ways, okay. uh, as opposed to just saying this is the type of yarn we're using. Right. New, new twists on yarn, chunkier yarns, okay. thinner. Just, just playing with the materials so that the carpet uh, and rugs don't appear as flat right. and kind of as boring looking. Right. Um, the synthetics are making big improvements, uh, particularly in the sustainability elements of those. I mean, there's still a lot of unsustainable elements right. of that, but I, I think great strides are being made that way. What do you think of the carpet industry? What's their, their challenge? We talked about your challenge on social media. What the, what's the uh, challenge for, for the carpet industry? Uh, the handmade carpet industry's major challenge is ever-increasing wages, because production's usually done in developing countries. Right. and. The core of that is developing, so they continue to develop. Um, and then, uh, you know, getting that product to the consumer at a price point they'll still, you know, pay or be willing to pay. And that has been a challenge the last hundred years. And we've really reached the point now in, in you know, human civilization that we don't know how to deal with that yet. And uh, I imagine that handmade carpets will continue to be uh, in decline in terms of volume, but I also likewise think that the artistry will probably increase as it becomes a, you know, a more niche product. Right. Yeah, because I think that also that time is, I need to look at the, the timing at the, <laughs> the phone, because um, I think that more and more carpets are art. Mm. The industry has long promoted it that way, yeah. but now you really see some really great modern designers coming in. Yeah. I think maybe 10 or 15 years ago, uh, the technology of the period allowed us to start like imposing like photographic style yeah. on, on the rugs. And that was kind of nice quickly, but kind of became stale yeah. uh, very quickly. And now we're starting to see people understanding that you can take that concept, produce it in a more figurative way, yeah. and still convey the concept but with a little more intention and, and meaning behind it than just, oh, it's my daughter imposed right. on a rug. Right. Right. Okay, Michael, our 15 minutes are up, our basically. I know, our frame, yeah, let's go back to normal, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are you gonna do now? I mean, you're gonna, be, you're gonna be at the seminar that I'm at, actually at as well, or a yes. panel yes. Uh, in a few hours. What are you gonna do here? You're gonna be here for two more days. I'm here two more days. Uh, I'll walk around, see friends, look at rugs. Um, I talk to a lot of people because, and everyone is always like, oh, thank you for your time, and thank you for talking, and I'm like, no, 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 this is how I find out things I need right. to find out. Yeah. So I talk to, a, I do a lot of talking, and a lot of listening, um, and, and looking at, watching what buyers are buying.